bringing the people behind our food to life. If there is one thing any mother should know how to make, and if there's one thing any mother everywhere makes, it's chicken soup. And so today I'm going to make the kind of chicken soup I make at my restaurant, Mother's Bistro and Bar, which is uh, the soup my mother used to make for me. Some people call it Jewish penicillin. Uh, whatever you call it, it's good. I like to start out with two whole chickens. Why? I like to make a lot. If I'm going to go through the trouble of making soup, I want to make enough to last for a few meals. And not only am I going to show you how to make soup, but what to do with this soup after it's become a wonderful broth that can become so many other dishes. So I put in my chickens whole and I do also use the necks and you can use the gizzards, but you don't want to use the livers. You can save those and make them for pate someday, but you want to keep them out of your soup. It'll make it cloudy and make it taste a little funky. And then I throw my vegetables in whole because this is going to cook for three to four hours. There's no point in cutting the vegetables. We'll be able to extract all the flavor from the vegetables whole and just think of how much time you save. So for every chicken, I use two um, carrots and two stalks of celery and an onion for every chicken. And I like also to use parsnips. That's the root of the parsley. A lot of flavor, but again about two. Now these are small, so I added a little extra, a little extra parsnip for the love. And then parsley stems and leaves. If you have some parsley stems hanging around, don't worry. You don't need to go buy leaves, but parsley is also great to add to the soup. I like to garnish my soup with fresh dill, which I'll show you in a minute. But if you have the stems from the dill, you can throw those in the soup too. Um, then you want to use cold water, never hot water from your tap. Hot water can get funky flavors from your uh, hot water heater. So fresh cold water added to the soup at least a gallon and a half. This is going to make a good quantity. And you want to bring this up to a boil, but you never boil a soup. Bring it up to a boil. Once you see the bubbles, lower it and let it simmer. And then you want to skim it so that any of those impurities that rise to the top go away so your soup is nice and clear. And we're going to go ahead and start it on a high heat, but then we will lower it when it comes to a boil. So I've had my soup cooking now for three to four hours, and I'm using a thing we call in the restaurant business, it's called a spider. And what it does is it allows you to take out big stuff and uh, leave the broth behind. But if you don't have one, you can use a, um, a spatula with holes, although it's a little less sturdy. So what you want to do is take all the big stuff out of the soup and set it on a plate. And we're going to, afterwards, we're going to pick through the chicken and we're going to reserve it for the soup. And we're going to also use some of the chicken later for chicken and dumplings. Now, you'll notice that I will be throwing away the vegetables that I cooked with the chickens to make the broth. They've done their business. They've given all they can to the soup. Now that the big stuff is gone, we're going to strain the broth into another pot. You might want to let your broth cool a little bit before you do this. Um, if it becomes too hot to handle, we don't want you to burn yourself. So you can let your broth sit a little bit before you do this action here. So strain it all out. And don't forget to get the good pieces out of your sieve. Now before you take the chicken out of the soup, you'll notice that I didn't put any salt and pepper when I first started my soup. That's because we want to let the flavors develop and we will have some reduction of the liquid. And if you put salt in too early, it's going to concentrate as the uh, water evaporates and concentrates the flavors. So you want to wait till the tail end of when you've cooked your soup to add your salt and pepper. So before straining, right before is when I add some salt and pepper and then I taste it again. Um, so now I have this amazing, wonderful broth, and I'm going to turn this on. And to this, I'm going to add some carrot and celery, which gives a nice bite, gives great color to your broth, adds a little more flavor. And later in the chicken and dumplings, it's vegetables that can be eaten. So we put that back in. We're going to bring this to a boil, and we're going to let the broth and these veggies cook for probably about 10, 15 minutes till they're fork tender. While my vegetables are cooking now, I am going to go ahead 
and pick through my chicken, trying to keep my pieces as big as I can because if I wanna use this for another dish, as I'll show you, chicken and dumplings, chicken and biscuits, you can make chicken pot pie, um, depending on what the dish is, depends on the size of the chicken you want. For chicken and dumplings, I like to keep my pieces big, but for adding to my soup right before serving, they can be kind of small. So now I know that my vegetables are tender, I'm now going to plate the soup. The way I do it is number one, I like to cook my noodles ahead of time and keep them separate. And that way uh, they don't get mushy and they don't cloud the soup. You want to have a nice clear broth. So a pinch of noodles for every guest, and you can warm them up in hot water if you want, or you could just put them in like this, and if your broth is nice and hot, it should heat up your noodles. And then I'll use the smaller pieces of chicken to garnish the soup, because I wanna save my big pieces for my dumpling, as I told you about earlier. So some noodles and some chicken, and then what I'm gonna do is ladle on the broth that's nice and hot with my cooked vegetables into the bowl. Mm. Now again, this is my version of chicken soup. There are mothers in Greece that add lemon and orzo or rice to their soup and egg. Italians put spinach and egg in it and call it straticelli. I don't think there's a mother anywhere that doesn't make chicken soup and whatever way it is, whatever way you love it, uh, so be it. But this is how I do it. And um, also now I'm gonna garnish it with a little dill. Again, another uh, Eastern European influence. We love our dill in Eastern Europe. And uh, a lot of Jews came from Eastern Europe, hence uh, the usage of that herb. And so there it is, a beautiful bowl of chicken soup with dill, celery, carrot, um, just a note, when you are making your chicken soup, you will get a lot of fat rising to the top, and you've got two options. You can skim that off when you skim the scum. Alternatively, you can let your chicken soup chill overnight if you're not going to serve it that day, and uh, the fat will rise to the top. You'll get a whole layer that you could just pick off, because the chicken does uh, yield quite a bit of fat. Now, there are lots of other things I can make with chicken soup. So now I've got all this broth. I'm gonna show you what we can do. We can make chicken and dumplings, so we gotta make a roux, which is flour and butter, which we use to thicken the broth, and that makes like a velouté or a chicken gravy. I'll show you that, and then what else to do with that as well. So we are going to make a roux to thicken up the chicken soup that I made earlier, and that way we'll be able to use the same broth for chicken and dumplings. And in fact, even the same broth that we make this with, we can make chicken and biscuits. So starting out with a half a pound of butter and three quarter pound of flour, we're gonna make a roux, melting the butter, and we're going to cook the butter with the flour for about five minutes until it resembles sand on the beach. Add the flour, the butter doesn't even have to be melted by the time you add it, the butter will melt all the time. We add the flour, and so see, we stir that together. And this should be the right amount for the total batch of chicken soup. But if you're not going to roux up, if you're not going to thicken all of the chicken soup, then you should not use all of this roux. So now this is gonna cook a little bit, and while this cooks, I'm gonna go ahead and make the dumplings that we're going to put in the thickened broth. And first we start out with about three cups of flour. And I like to use pastry flour. It's a little finer, but if you only have all-purpose flour, that's fine too. And to that we're going to cut in about a tablespoon and a half of butter. Basically what you want is little pieces of butter mixed into the flour. Little pieces of butter is a good thing. That's what makes pie dough flaky because as the butter melts, it creates a flake. And same thing even with a biscuit or a dumpling. Little pieces, the size of peas is perfect. To that I'm gonna add two tablespoons of chopped parsley. I always like Italian flat leaf parsley. I feel like it's got a lot better flavor than that curly stuff. A tablespoon of baking powder, little salt and pepper, and then I'm going to stir in whole milk. Not using the whisk, we don't wanna mix it too much. 
Um, basically, anytime you mix something that has flour in it, the more you work it, the more chewy it gets. So when you make bread, you want to work it, you want to knead it. That gives you a nice texture. When you make pasta, you want to knead it because that's what makes it chewy. But when you're making a biscuit or pie dough, as little mixing as possible is best. So one to one and a quarter cups of milk, just enough to bind it so that you can scoop it into the chicken gravy that we're about to make. So notice again, not a whole lot of mixing. I'm gonna stop as soon as it looks like the flour's incorporated. Boom, I'm good. Let it be. My roux is still cooking here. Now, I don't think that I'm going to need all this roux for the amount of the chicken soup I made because I did uh, pour some off to serve some. So I'm going to set this here, and I'm going to go ahead and add most of the roux to my chicken broth, but not all of it. I'll take a wait and see attitude and see how thick it is. And I am going to cook my dumplings in this. So I want to make sure that it's nice and thick and not lumpy before I start cooking my dumplings. So you add the roux to the broth while stirring and it should start thickening. Now it will take up to about a half an hour to get to the right thickness. I've already made some rude liquid earlier so we don't have to wait for that to get there and to this we're going to add the dumplings we just made so you want to have your nice thick gravy hot almost at a boil when you're adding the dumplings i like to use a scoop you could use a spoon the advantage of using a scoop and i use it for muffins and so many things it gives you even portion size so every dumpling will be this size so into your hot broth that's been thickened, isn't lumpy, it's seasoned. You're going to drop your dumpling one by one into the hot liquid. And once I've scooped them all out, you want to make sure that they're covered by the liquid. And this should take about 15 to 20 minutes for the dumplings to get cooked all the way through to the middle. And it's like any biscuit or any bread. You test the inside, see if it comes out clean. If it's not gooey, you know you're there. Let's get a lid and we're going to let it go. Make sure they're nice and covered in the liquid and let it go. So this is the chicken that I picked from the chicken soup and some of the little pieces I put in the soup, but the bigger pieces I like to use for a main course dish like chicken and dumplings. Um, so now there's two ways you could do it. You can have it already hot or you can warm it in your liquid where your dumplings have cooked. So you could also just take the, your pieces and put it back in and warm it that way, but you wanna make sure that you don't rip them apart because you wanna have nice big pieces of chicken in your, um, in your bowls. So these are already warm. I'm gonna go ahead and leave them in there. So I set my chicken in my uh, dumpling serving dish and these are the cooked dumplings. Look how nice they look. I like to give two per person. And of course there's plenty here and then scoop in that wonderful, nice, velvety chicken gravy. And you'll see those pieces of carrots in there. Now, I love parsley, and as I said, I use it in many dishes, but you know, that little sprig of parsley, little chopped parsley at the end really does add a nice, a fresh flavor, a nice herbaceous flavor, and it really isn't just for looks. Parsley really does add flavor, and I put it on a lot of my dishes. This is the kind of dish we serve it in at Mother's, but you can use a bowl. I just love how it looks going to the table with a nice little lid like that. And uh, that's our chicken and dumplings. I gotta taste it, by the way. Gotta make sure everything is good. Mm. I always taste everything before I send it out. Salt, pepper, make sure it's right. Now, that is an all you can do with chicken soup. Besides chicken and dumplings, you can make yet another dish. Now, there are many you can make you, besides the one I'm about to show you, but this is chicken and biscuits. So at Mother's, we serve buttermilk biscuits, and sometimes we have some left from one day to the next. So this is a dish that I'm actually uh, going to be trying out at a special event. So I'm going to scoop that liquid that I use for my dumplings. So now this is my chicken gravy. And into this, I'm going to add some peas and corn. I already have the carrots and celery in there. 
and maybe like about a tablespoon for every serving, a little bit of that. Um, we have these biscuits at the restaurant. They're buttermilk biscuits. You can make cream biscuits as well. And just warm them up in the oven a little bit to make them fresh. They're really good as a nice foil, kind of like the biscuit in the chicken and dumplings, but this is a baked biscuit as opposed to a boiled or steamed biscuit as the dumplings. And then you spoon out this wonderful gravy with the pieces of chicken. And P.S., you can add a few more, you know, make it a little more substantial. And now you have chicken and biscuits. Um, and again, on top of this, I would love to uh, add some more parsley. Again, I think that adds a nice, wonderful layer of flavor. Boom! Another dish. And besides that, there's one more you could do. You could take the exact same ingredients that we just poured on top of the biscuit and put it in another crock. And on top of this, put pie dough or the same biscuit dough that you use to make biscuits lay it on top, and what do you have? Chicken pot pie. So all these dishes stem from one pot, our chicken soup, which is the fundamental motherly dish that every mother makes, but she can feed her family chicken and something for the rest of the week. P.S. Another note, I love these containers. I call them quart containers. That's what they are. They hold a quart. Any soup I make, especially my chicken soup, I make it in big batches. And why, if I'm gonna cook it, the pot's gonna be on the stove for four hours anyway, I'm using the energy anyway, I might as well make a lot. And the beautiful thing about soups is they freeze well. These containers are great. You could just write with masking tape what's inside. And then when you want a quick meal, this is a perfect fast food. Take it out of the freezer, heat it up in a pot, serve it with a salad, black bean soup, chicken soup, any kind of soup is great reheated. So I highly recommend you get these. When you make soup, make a lot, double the recipe, or in my case, my cookbook actually makes 12 servings, and then you've got a few meals for the future, not just for today. You know, I told my son I was going to the farmer's market and I told him some of the things I was going to get and he's like, oh, kale! <laughs> it's, it just makes me so happy that he loves kale. <laughs>